Hello, this is Michael Powell. I'm the director of the Department of Water for the City of Dayton. And today, we're gonna do another one of the director spotlights. Now this is an opportunity where we'll have to get with some of the many talented people within the Department of Water who will go above and beyond each and every day. But we talk with them not only about the things that they do here within the department, but some of the things they do outside. Today we're privileged to have with us Jared Boyd. Good afternoon, hey, Jared. Mike. How you doing? Awesome. It's good to have you with us today. Yep, you too. Now, Jared, why don't you first of all tell us a little bit about how long you've been with the department? Um, I've been with the department for 21 and a half years now. 21 and a half years, that's quite yeah. a while. Um, in my current position, uh, the crew leader position has been about 10 years. All right, so now you're a water systems crew leader. Yes, sir. And so now as a water systems crew leader, can you tell us a little bit about what, let's say, a daily or typical day for yours is? What kinds uh, of things? A daily typical day for us is going out and investigate water leaks. Um, if we have any kind of leak that we find, um, we generally, you know, make an excavation, make the repair. And of course, the excavation involves putting back the cut and things of that nature. All right, so now just to be clear, you all excavate, repair, and put back the cuts. Yes, sir, correct. Not correct. everybody within this area does all of that. No, not all in one day, too. Exactly, yeah. one day, nice <laughs> point. One day. So now, tell us a little bit, Jared, about not only do you respond to these things during normal hours of the day, but also there's for, for instance, there's some emergency repairs that have to be done. Oh yeah, um, things come in emergency, especially during the day, and things come in at night. Um, we have a standby shift that um, rotates and comes in. But yeah, we handle a um, 24-hour operation here at the water department. All right. So now, Jared, now you've just described for us the kinds of things that you've been doing for the past so many years or whatever within WUFO, the water utility field operations, yeah. day in, day out, even on an emergency basis. Now that's here at work. Tell us a little bit about what you do outside of work. Well, um, I'm in the Army Reserves. Um, I just recently retired from the Army Engineers, um, 24 and a half years. So um, I've been around the world a lot. I've been uh, tour Afghanistan, uh, tour Iraq, and um, of course I've been to Guatemala, Honduras, oh, wow. um, things of that nature. Wow. So I stay pretty busy. <laughs> I guess so. so. Well, a lot of our tours, you know, our first tour in Afghanistan, we actually got to help the women. You know, they actually got to vote for the first time. We stood and watched the polls and made sure that nothing happened and um, basically built a lot of roads and runways. Um, a lot of places in Afghanistan didn't have roads until we right. got there. So we was able to, to make roads, which was valuable to them for their trading. Because that's how, they didn't have a lot of currency, but in order, they, they did a lot of trading with other things to, to get food and things. All right, so you took so. an area where there was no road, built roads. Right. Now, is there any difference between building roads here than there? No, the idea is all the same. It's just uh, where you get your materials and what you got to work with. Um, here in Dayton, we have the luxury of everything's kind of flat, but we're in over in Afghanistan, kind of, we take dozers and, and drove them up on the mountains and actually pushed our gravel down to the bottom and put oh, them wow. in the large rock compactors that crushed the rock up right. that we needed to get for the roads that we're right. talking about. Well, so, that's different. Yeah, you know, brakes on a dozer kind of makes it interesting, <laughs> so, yeah. Wow. But, yeah. You know, it's really interesting. When I first came here, I've only been to the department about eight years or so. Yeah. When I first came here, you were an employee that I did not meet for like, it was like six or seven months. Right. You know, and it was because you were away on one of your assignments. Yeah, that, that process I was in a tour in Iraq. Really? So, yeah. And we was out into Karit. It was actually doing a lot of road down there in Iraq for the, help. actually worked with the Iraqi military. Wow. So, we went hand to hand um, building roads down wow. there. Wow. So. Interesting. Great. Similar equipment? Um, yeah. You right. know, real similar equipment. Everything's the same. You know, um, the people were willing to learn. So, I mean, they were very eager to learn. Wow. So, and they was, you know, we was glad to teach them. All right. So, so not only did you build, but you helped train the individuals. So yes, we did. Self-sufficient. Oh, yeah. Very yeah. nice. Very yeah. nice. So now, when you think back over your, your, your 24 years, now you say you've retired. Now, how long have you been retired? Um, about, yeah, about a year. About a year now? Yeah. Now, is this something you think that you're going to miss? Um, I think this takes the place of it. Okay. So, um, I got a little seven-year-old daughter that I like to, you know, we go hunting and fishing and hiking and things. So, having her on the weekends kind of okay. fulfills those, those duties that I miss, that I'll be missing. Yeah. And she so was actually born while I was in Iraq. So, I didn't really? get to see her for, yeah, it's five months. Wow. Before I get home. So, wow. So now when you say that you, you guys hunt fish and those sorts of things, any particular special sport that's your favorite? Oh, football. I'm a big football fan and baseball fan. I'm a Cleveland Brown fan, Cleveland, Cleveland Indian Browns. fans. Okay, yeah. now when this airs, you know. <laughs> oh, hey, I, hey, I got it. 
<laughs> Cleveland Browns. <laughs> so, Jared, would you say that in, in all of your your things that you've done outside that we've just talked about, you know, has the organization been supportive? Oh, they've been very supportive. Um, I put them in for an award called the, the Patriotic Employer Award, mm -hmm. which the government gives out. Um, there's a letter I have to write describing what they do for me. Um, basically, I wrote a letter describing how the city of Dayton's been very helpful to me while I'm overseas. Um, they sent me some care packages. Um, they checked on my wife while I was gone. Um, um, they, you know, got a job when I got back. So there's, there's a lot of good things that, that they did for me. Right. So I was very sensitive when I wrote this letter. And of course, you know, they got accepted for it. And um, I presented that award to Dave Shade when we got back. You know, it is nice that Jared uh, did recognize the city. You know, we appreciate that. Uh, I'll speak on behalf of the city for that. You know, it's it's nice that um, that he was able to recognize in, in the award, and we really appreciate him taking his time to uh, to write his superiors in in the army and and rec make that recognition. And um, you know, we we always try to support our employees that that are uh, involved in the military. We want to support that 100%, and we will hopefully be able to continue to do that. For a person that hasn't been to some of these areas of the world, how would you describe some of these places? Well, the, the temperature in the summertime is very hot and dusty. I mean, you're out there, you're in full battle rattle, you're carrying an extra additional 70 to 80 pounds on you. Um, everything you have is up armored. Your vehicles are up armored. So everything you touch is hot. So you're definitely you're wearing some kind of gloves, um, eye shade, um, your um, lotion you put on to keep your, your skin covered. Now, wait a minute, before you go any further, now yeah. you just described building roads and such. Yeah. But you're building roads and such in outfitted that, like this. Yes, outfitted in your heavy gear. Yes, sir. Wow. Yep. What's it like in all that gear at 130 degrees? Oh, it, it's hot and sweaty, I'll tell you that. It's not fun. I mean, it's something people say they get used to, you don't get used to really? it. Really? So you just tolerate it and wow. move on. We talk about PPE and those sorts of things here, sometimes being a little restrictive and those sorts of things. I guess nothing like what you had to deal with over there. No. No, no, not at all. <laughs> so now, Jared, you had mentioned that you, you built roads and infrastructure in areas where, where there none existed before. So now, what were these roads connecting? Um, basically, there was a big one outside ring road that Afghanistan had, okay. and all these villages were basically outside this ring road. And in further to help them communicate and travel, um, our group of intelligence would send a team in, uh, um, talk to make peace with the, the villagers or the, the, mm -hmm. the town that they've did. And we'd send a team in, analyze as well, as where we want to build this road to connect with the, the other road. So what it is, we'd send a team in, they'd go in, talk to them. And um, basically we'd come in and we'd build, uh, you know, the road from, you know, nothing to, to a nice asphalt paved road when we got done. These people had no roads before. Were you able to actually see what it was like with somebody for the first time were able to use something they never had before, like oh, a road? Oh yeah, well, yes, most definitely. I mean, people were just driving anywhere and everywhere. They had no no driver's law, you know, no no rules, no regulations. So it was, it was once the road was built, it was just, you know, cars were going everywhere. <laughs> so it was a good thing we built the road, but then now they have to work on the other part is, is coming up with the, the laws and regulations. Gotcha. For it. Well, Jared, it's great to have great employees like you. It makes it easy to do above and beyond spotlight, you know? Right. There's many things that people that, that do within the department like yourselves that make the day go well, and it makes all the accolades we get from our citizens and residents about how we do a job well, a job well done, those sorts of things or whatever, and it's by your actions and the actions of your teams that makes those kind of things possible. But thanks for everything else you do for us as well. You know, this has been another episode of the Director Spotlight, and we're bringing you little snippets of employees from around the department and the things that they do both inside the department and outside the department. So many of the things that you may not even know about, things that actually make you go, wow. Thanks. Stay tuned for our next episode.